One of my favorite Christian songs is called They'll Know We Are Christians. And the lyrics uh, say, they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. This is 100% accurate. People will know what we are all about by viewing us in our everyday lives. The way we represent ourselves around other people helps to define our character. Our co-workers, friends, even people we have just met will define us by what they see, by the way we carry ourselves, the way we act, and the things we do. People in our lives should have no doubt about where we stand in our discipleship to Christ because of our love. If we call ourselves followers of Christ, then love is our foundation. Everything else is built on love. When asked about the most important of the laws, Jesus replied in Matthew, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. Christ's life was about love. His ministry was about love, about reaching out, about loving without hesitation, without restriction, without conditions. He lived love every day he spent on this earth. And even in his moments dying on the cross, he asked his Father to forgive them, for they know not what they do. God is love. The defining characteristic of Christ is love, and therefore the defining characteristic of a Christian is also love. They will know we are Christians by our love. Many people who are not followers of Christ live lives that abide by many of God's commands. They don't murder. They don't steal. They're content with what they have. But has anyone ever come up to you at work or anywhere else and said, you know, as long as I've known you, never murdered anyone. Are you a Christian? Thou shalt not kill is indeed one of God's commands to us, but it is not a defining characteristic of a Christian. Love carries the weight of all the other commandments. And as we heard from Matthew, all the laws hang on this one thing. 1 John 4, verses 16 through 21 say this, God is love. Those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. It goes on to say, we love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers and sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The command that we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Now let's be perfectly clear. The Bible never says anything about having to like everyone. Let's be honest, there's people in our lives that get under our skin, that upset us, drive us crazy. And no matter how many times we try, we can't seem to form a friend relationship with that person. That's okay. You see, love looks different than like, doesn't it? Love is deeper than like. Love spends a minute praying for someone who's wronged you. Love comforts in times of distress. Love offers support. Love reconciles. We don't have to like everyone. But we are called to love everyone. To care for the general well-being of our fellow man, even our enemies. It takes a deep commitment level to live a life like this. And perhaps as human beings, we will never fully understand what it means to truly live the love of Christ. But we must continue to strive to be improving in love. So what does a love like this look like? How does a follower of Christ exude this kind of love? How do we live out this command? Romans 12, 9 through 16 says this, Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. 
Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. These are really hard things to do. It's hard to live a life in harmony with everyone around us. By nature and by God's design, we are all different. We have unique perspectives on life, unique ideas, thoughts, beliefs, values, and this is why we struggle so much to truly love our fellow man. We allow those things to get in the way of Christ's love. Yet the scriptures are clear, whoever does not love God, I'm sorry, whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. That's 1 John 4, 8. There's not any wiggle room there. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. So as we live a life of love and people around us see us, see us living this love, we will give them a glimpse of the kingdom of God. It may be the only glimpse they ever get. And in a world so full of pain and hurting and fear and sin, that light, that love, will shine even brighter. Shine your light. Shine God's love. Many lonely sailors have been cheered by the flashing signal from a nose light off the rugged coast of Massachusetts. The signal spells, I love you, in nautical code. Several years ago, the Coast Guard decided it's time to replace the old equipment. They announced that for technical reasons, the new machines would not be able to flash the I love you message. The public protest protested and the Coast Guard weakened. The old equipment was fixed, it remains, and continues its message of love through ships approaching the coast. The greatest message you could ever hear is God loves you. The message that should be on the lips of every Christian as we go about our daily lives is God loves you. God is love. Don't ever let someone, anyone, tell you that you can't shine God's love. Not the Coast Guard, not the public school system, not your job, your family, not your friends. How can we call ourselves disciples of Christ if we can't live that love? This love is freely given to us through Jesus Christ, and we mirror it in our own lives. And since Christ's most defining characteristic is love, love no matter what, and we, as followers of Christ, must show that same love. It must become our defining characteristic. We must show it to each other, to all we come in contact with. This includes the person who cuts in front of you into the ten items of less line and has a full cart of groceries. It includes someone who cuts you off in traffic. It includes the person who says something about you that hurts you. It includes people of different races, creeds, political and religious backgrounds. The person is sitting right next to you. And don't think for a second that we, as Christians, and as a church family, are immune to being void of that love. I have seen good Christian people struggle to show God's love to people within their same church family. If we can't show God's amazing love to each other as Christians and as a church family, then how will we ever be able to do it when we walk out those doors? It only gets harder when we leave this place. The world is cold, it is dark, it is evil, and Jesus is the light. It is our duty and privilege as Christians to shine that light into the world. 
The scriptures tell us that nothing can separate us from God's love. Romans 8, 38 and 39 say this, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. It is impossible for us to make God love us any more or any less than he does at this very second. As our mission statement at Zion states, we strive to connect people with God's love. It is my prayer that we will all strive to shine the light of God's love into the darkness, that we would strive to show Christ to everyone we are in contact with by living that love, mirroring the life and mission of our Savior Jesus Christ. We love because He first loved us.